Hello and welcome to episode one in the series Particle Physics 101. And today I'm going to be talking about the standard model of particle physics. The standard model of particle physics is maybe one of the most widely accepted theories when talking about particle physics in general. What? Did that guy just say it's a theory? He's wrong. Well, actually, interesting fact, even though all the particles in the standard model have already been proven to exist, it's still a theory. And I'm going to get into that in just a moment. The first question is, well, what is the standard model? What does it represent? The standard model of particle physics represents fundamental particles, which basically mean the smallest unit of matter. Originally, when people thought the atom couldn't be split, the atom was a fundamental particle. Then when the atom was split, protons, neutrons, and electrons were fundamental particles. Then when protons and neutrons were split, we found, finally, the most fundamental unit of matter that exists. At least, till what we know for now. So, that is essentially the gist of the standard model and what it represents. So what were the problems I was talking about and why is this still a theory? Well, there are a few questions that the standard model simply does not answer. One of the most popular ones being why is there more matter in the universe than antimatter? This is a very popular question no matter who you're asking it to. And the answer is actually we don't know. This problem is known as baryon asymmetry, which basically, as I just mentioned, suggests why is there more matter than antimatter? One question that the standard model does not answer. There are other questions that the standard model does not answer. Another very popular one being why is the universe accelerating in its expansion? If the universe was incredibly quick to begin with, how is it getting even quicker? as of now. Dark matter, dark energy, a few questions once again the standard model just does not have an answer to. Anyways, getting a little sidetracked here, let's actually get to the main content of this video, the standard model. Let's get started. So the first thing we have to understand is the two major classifications of particles, fermions and bosons. One thing I have to tell you here, you'll be hearing a lot of crazy names of particles, fermions, bosons, hadrons, mesons, baryons. So once again, a lot of this is simple memorization. And unfortunately, even though I personally am not a fan of memorizing stuff, this is the only way to actually explain it. To explain the standard model, I simply have to tell you it exists. So fermions consist of two major subcategories, quarks and leptons. And these are the fundamental particles that I'm talking about. The quarks make up our protons and neutrons, and our leptons are the electrons, as you can see over there. So, as you can also see, the quarks split up into six different flavors. Why are they called flavors? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, it's a lot about just random naming schemes. So there are six different flavors of quarks up down, uh, top, bottom, charm, and strange. Really weird names, I know, but there's nothing I can do about it. So the up and down quarks are the most important when talking about protons and neutrons. So what differentiates a proton from a neutron? Well, that's its quark composition. So a proton consists of two up quarks and one down quark, and a neutron consists of two down quarks and one up quark. And then we have the lepton family. So in the lepton family, we have our electron. Now one thing to note here, as you can see, there's nothing that makes up electrons. And that is why they're so light. When many people say, when your chemistry teacher says that protons are much heavier than electrons, but don't give you a good explanation for them, is because protons consist of fundamental particles. The electron is a fundamental particle. Interesting fact. So leptons, so we have electrons, which I'm pretty sure all of us know. Muons, now muons are fundamental particles that exist in cosmic rays, interesting fact. And tau particles. Then we have the three very weird types of particles. Electron neutrino, muon neutrino, and tau neutrinos. So neutrinos do not interact with 
anything. There are actually millions of solar neutrinos penetrating my body as of now, as I'm speaking, but I don't feel them because it doesn't interact with me. And electron, muon, and tau neutrinos are just different states of neutrinos, not too much there. And then, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the second classification of particles, bosons. Bosons are a little bit weird because they represent force carrying particles. What does that really mean? So force carrying particles, as the term suggests, are particles that carry a specific force. Now that may seem a little weird to you as to how can a particle carry a force, but think about this. I'm pretty sure you have learned that light consists of photons. So what are photons if not force carrying particles? Interesting fact. So we have four major fundamental forces in nature. The strong nuclear force, which is represented by the gluon, the weak nuclear force, which is represented by the W and Z bosons, the electromagnetic force, which is represented by the photon, and then the one that we have no idea about, the gravitational force. The gravitational force is said to be carried out by the graviton, but we have absolutely no idea about its existence. We have proposed theories on them, but nothing concrete. And then as you can see, something lingering in the distance, the Higgs boson. If you want to know a little bit more about Higgs boson than just a crash course, you can check out my video over here, but I'm just going to give you the summary right now. So the Higgs boson was proposed by Peter Higgs in 1964, which proposed mass. Many people ask the common question, how much does this weigh? And they may be like five kilograms, but then not what many people ask, is where does that mass actually come from? What is giving those apples, let's say, five kilograms of mass? I say mass, not weight, because weight is another story. And that is what the Higgs boson aims to answer. I know that's been a lot of memorization, just random words being dropped on you, bosons, fermions, quarks, leptons, neutrinos. So I really do hope you enjoyed this video, since as I mentioned, it was a lot of memorization. But I do hope you enjoyed it, and until next time, stay sharp.